is the Father's love. The Father's love. His love and His righteousness cannot be separated. In society today, in society today, love is without righteousness. Whatever you feel, just do it, as long as no one else is hurt by it. But God's love is intensely righteous. He so loves you that He sent His Son to die on a cross because you were a sinner. That's love. So when God looks upon you, He's not really looking at your makeup or your business shoe, suit or the car that you drive. He's looking at your heart. He's looking intently at you. His Spirit, the Holy Spirit, yearns jealously for you. He wants you to be filled with His loving righteousness. Last night we had... Um, if, if the parent of that young boy can just help out and settle him down, that would be great. So, last night the Lord um, spoke to three young people. And you see, prophecy is love in action. Prophecy is, is God speaking His love to you. So one was a young lady who wanted, wanted to be free of fear, anxiety, suicide, yeah, mental illness. And through prophecy or the seven of spirits, the Lord revealed to her her addiction to horoscopes and that she had a spirit of witchcraft from being addicted or constantly looking at horoscopes. You see, God so loved that young woman that he exposed the sin and the demonic that she could be free. Some people they just want the blessing, but they don't want the root to be dealt with. So when you come to Jesus, He has eyes of fire that will burn into your soul. And those eyes of fire are love and holiness. And He looks at you with intent love. And he wants to burn the sin out of you. He wants to deliver you from that which you are enslaved to. That's the Father's love. He so loves you that he sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross. To make you whole. To cleanse your heart. To wash you whiter than snow. Hallelujah. Amen. In James 4 4, the Apostle John James says, Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously. So sin brings bondage and Jesus Christ in his love wants to set you free from sin, from the power of sin. So reading Deuteronomy 30 verse 19, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you 
life and death, blessing and cursing. We had another young man, another young person, and with mental problems, anxiety or whatever it was, and I said to him, computer games, that's where you got your demon from. God has set before us blessing and curse, life and death. Blessing is not the same as healing and deliverance. Blessing is choosing righteousness. God will give you good things, but true blessing comes when you repent of sin. Amen. Choose this day whom you will serve, life or death, blessing or curse. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey His voice, that you may cling to Him. Do you know what it means to cling to God? It means in you I live and move and have my being. I cling to you. Michael, can you come and help me with the sound, please? I cling to you. I'm trusting you. I need you to stand up. I need you to sit down. All of life is a miracle. I'm relying, I'm clinging to you. You're not an appendage in my life. You are my all. That you may dwell, where are we? That you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey His voice, that you may cling to Him, for He is your life and the length of your days that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers. He is your life. See, our, our understanding as Christians is, I breathe by His grace. I walk by His grace. My life depends on His life. When I am weak, then He is strong. In my weakness, His power is manifest. I'm, I'm clinging to Him. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm clinging to Him. He is my life. So the Father loves us and the perfect manifestation of the love of God in a person is when they have completely surrendered to the Word of God. The Word of God dominates their life such that Jesus Christ is Lord, when that happens, the love of God is perfected in you. Amen. The love of God is more than just a feeling. The love of God is God indwelling you. And His love will indwell you perfectly when you are completely surrendered to the Word of God, which is Jesus Christ. 1 John 2 5. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Wow. Amen. The love of God is is when you have surrendered your life to Christ, His love will take over in your heart. You cannot separate the love of God from righteous living. When you surrender yourself to Him, He takes over more and more and more. Everyone say, less of me and more of Him. Turn to your neighbor and say, God's love is perfected in you. When you yield yourself completely, utterly to the Word of God. Amen. You with me, 
Joe. So, when God looks at you intently, He wants to develop something in you. He wants to develop the spiritual man or woman in you. And when, when you, you go through school, they want to develop your intellect, education. They want to develop your athletic abilities. When you go to uh, what we, I don't know what you call it here in the UK, but when you, you want to be a mechanic, they'll teach you skills about being a mechanic. If you want to be a scientist, they'll teach you about science. You know, your, your parents want you to grow up to be someone who is confident socially, who can make friends, you know, who, who's not a rebel, all right? When God looks at you, He goes deeper than all that. That's all superficial. What you know, how you dress, your friends, that's all. He wants to make you a spiritual man or woman. He wants to develop your spiritual nature in Him. He wants you to grow up spiritually. Turn to your neighbor and say, God wants you to grow up spiritually. That's what's important. Amen. Many Christians are only concerned about their social life. You know, they go to church and then they're you know, they're socialising, they're partying, they're drinking, they're, you know, they're doing... They, they look like the rest of the world. God wants us to grow up into the stature of the fullness of Christ. If God loves you, what does He want? He wants you to grow up in Him. He wants you to be like Him and not like the world. If you love the world, the things of the world, and you talk about the world, and you want to just be like everyone else, and all that matters is that you're accepted, you've become an enemy of God. 1 Corinthians 2.14 The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. God wants you to grow up as a spiritual person. That's His love for you. So that you can experience the love of God. That you can receive the riches of heaven. He wants you to be born again. And He wants you to grow up. Hallelujah. You know, what parent is happy when their child never goes beyond the two-year-old? You know? We, they, you all want your children to grow up and become adults. And God's no different. When you're born again as a daughter and son of God, He, he wants you to grow up. Hallelujah. So the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. When you grow up spiritually, you grow up in the Word of God. The Word of God is light, and you can see the difference between light and darkness. Many people are spiritually blind simply because their, their eyes and ears and senses are so filled with the world and the darkness of the world and the spirit of the world that they cannot see. And so their spiritual man is like a child. But when the spiritual man grows up in Christ, the spiritual man judges all things and is rightly judged by no man. That means that you have perfect spiritual vision. Wow. You have perfect discernment. Paul wasn't worried about anyone judging him. He knew who he was in Christ. He knew the Word of God. Hallelujah. He wasn't subject to human court. He wasn't, you know, they kept dragging him before the courts and beating him up and, and condemning him and so on and slandering him. But it never, he knew who he was in Christ. 
His spiritual man was alive in Christ. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Many people come for prayer because they do not understand themselves. They have no discernment of what's going on. God wants us to grow up and have discernment. And as you go deeper in the Word, and the Word goes deeper in you, you will receive discernment. Amen. And so God is, uh, Ephesians 4.11 talks about how God has appointed the church, first apostles, then evangelists, prophets, pastors, teachers. And it says, for the knowledge of the Son of God, so that to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, in the cunning of craftiness, of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love, you may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. You know, people, whatever their view, who got totally engrossed with COVID and, you know, that was their whole life, all they talked about are spiritual children. You need to grow up. You need to be able to see beyond the physical and natural world and to go into the heavenlies and see the warfare that's going on and to see what Christ has for you, his heavenly mandate for you, and not get caught up and focus on things that he doesn't want you to focus on. At Gem, basically the only involvement with COVID we had was seeing people healed of COVID. And that YouTube company we couldn't talk about. So, the Father is so intent that you grow up in righteousness and godliness that as a good Father, He's going to discipline you. Everyone say, ouch. Because that's what good fathers do. Amen? So when we turn to Luke 15 about the prodigal son, the prodigal son says to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So the father didn't argue with the son. He gave him what he demanded, so he divided to them his livelihood. Sometimes God's way of redeeming your soul from your rebelliousness is to give you what you're asking for. Ouch. So the father allowed the boy to have what he demanded, gave him the money. And so with the money, he went off to a far country and did what his heart wanted to do. Because the father knew the boy's heart. He went off with his money, spent it on prostitutes, on the party line. And then the father allowed a drought. And the boy ended up feeding the pigs. Now you know, with the Jewish people, feeding the pigs would be the worst of the worst job. He had nothing to eat. And then he came to his senses. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. The father wanted the son to have a change of heart, a repentant heart. He wanted his son to grow up. And so to get him there, he had to allow him to have what he was demanding, allow him to go deeper into darkness so that he might, through repentance, come into the light. Amen? Many of us here today have, God has allowed us to have the things that we wanted so that he could bring us into the light. 
It's one of his ways of disciplining us, of giving you the things that don't help you, that you so want. And you know, praise God for his goodness when he doesn't give us the things we demand. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, not only does God want to bring you out of sin, He wants to bring you out of things that are unhelpful. You know, if you have a child, the child may not be doing something that you would class as sin, but some things are unhelpful. Amen? Negative habits. Hello. Negative habits. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10, 23, All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edify. Let no one seek his own, but each one the other's well-being. Not everything that we do is edifying, is helpful in your life. Some things like like sugar and sugary foods. It's not a sin, but, it, but some people are diabetics because of it. It's not very helpful. Amen? Like for me personally, you know, I, I love my tea and coffee, but it just caused me to go up and down, up and down, and uh, be exhausted, and my emotions going up and down. And then I thought, this is stupid. It's not helpful. It's not a sin. It's not helpful though. It's messing with me. So about 2014, I, I gave up on caffeine. It wasn't helpful. And I'm very happy. Amen. Some of you, you've got habits in your life that are not helpful. Turn to your neighbor and say, what is your unhelpful habit? <laughs> and some of you spouses are saying, I'm happy to tell you. <laughs> you know, for some people, it's uh, like, like talking about myself. Uh, I, I just read the news, you know. It's my way of chilling out, reading the news, and uh, and I knew it was an unhelpful habit, you know. And uh, I think three weeks ago we went and saw some prophets, and um, we were conversing. And I walked out of that meeting and I haven't read the news since. An unhelpful habit had been taken away by the goodness of God. That's the love of God. You know? Turn to your neighbor and say, seriously, what is your unhelpful habit? Shall we touch on a sensitive point? You know, some, some of you here, you just love shopping, clothes shopping. And you spend so much money on the clothes, so much time on it. And you know, God is interested in how you look on the inside. Amen? Maybe it's an unhelpful habit. Maybe you could spend time, your time in a better way. I'm not saying that clothes shopping is sinful, but I'm saying that all things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. Amen? Hallelujah. We're going deep tonight, aren't we? <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. God intently loves you. Don't bring yourself into darkness and bondage 
to the enemy. I've been in communication with someone who had an amazing miracle a few years ago, but then they went into witchcraft, false religion, and, you know, walk in the light. Follow simply Jesus. Walk in the Word. You know, God loves you intently. Galatians 4 8. But then, indeed, when you did not know God, you served those which by nature are not gods. But now, after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements? What are these elements? They're powers and principalities. How is it that you turn to them? To which you desire again to be in bondage. You come to meetings. Holy Spirit comes on you. Come, go out and walk in the light. And don't go back into the bondage of stuff you were involved in before. You know, the spirit of the world is Satan. And he works through the things of the world. He'll work through anything that's worldly to bring you in bondage. You, you watch something on the internet, you know, maybe it's um, horror movies, or maybe it's watching one of these soaps, you know, and you don't realize that behind the screen are demons. Gaming, computer gaming. Behind the screen are demons. Certain types of children's cartoons. Behind the cartoon are demons. Books about fairy fairies in the story are demons. Don't go into bondage under these principalities and powers and darkness. Now that you've received the Spirit of God, walk in the light as He is light. Amen? I heard one pastor, David Wilkinson, he gathered up all the TVs in the house, I don't know how many there were, put them in his ute and uh, drove out into the forest and took his shotgun and blew them all up. <laughs> Amen? Then to your neighbor and say, just shoot your habit. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is so good. Let's close our eyes, shall we? What is your sin? What is your unhelpful habit? Yield yourself to Jesus Christ. The Father God loves you intently with fire in his eyes. He loves you intently and he wants you to be free to serve him. Free to have perfect love indwell your heart. He wants you to be a consecrated temple, vessel of God that he can use his glory his praise. Now yield your sin to Him. Confess your sin to Him. Is it your mouth? Is it your attitudes? Is it your money attitudes? Is it gossip? Is it unforgiveness? Is it stuff you watch on the internet, TV? Is it the way that you talk to people? Is it what you eat or what you drink? Or what is it that is holding you back? Tonight, yield it to Him. Give it to him that he might be Lord of all. Many things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. Yield them to him tonight. Make him Lord of your life. Thank you, Jesus. He wants to take you deeper into himself, which is deeper into holiness, deeper into surrender. Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Take control of my life. Purify me by the blood of Jesus. 
Set me free from the things that enslave me. Be Lord of my life. May I surrender completely to the Word of God. May it dominate me and control me such that Jesus is Lord of everything in my life. Lord Jesus, today I make this vow that I will follow you all the days of my life by your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.